Today's lesson is on the quotient properties of exponents. And we're going to apply these properties so that we can simplify algebraic expressions. Now prior to this, we learned about the product properties of exponents. And we learned that if two terms have the same base and they're multiplied together, then we can add their exponents to simplify. In the quotient property, we have a division problem, most of the time in the form of a fraction. And what we can do in a division problem, when term, terms have the same base, we can subtract their exponents. So if we take a look at our numerical example, 9 to the 5th over 9 to the 2nd, and we expand it out, we put it in expanded form. Remember, this is exponential form and this is expanded form. Then we can do a one-to-one -one cancellation. 9 divided by 9 is 1, 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 1 times anything is itself. So when we see what we have left over in our numerator, we have 9 times 9 times 9, which is the same as 9 to the third. But instead of expanding that out every time, and it would get a little bit crazy if our exponents were very large, and we just need to apply the quotient of powers property. And that says that if you have the same base in a quotient or a fraction, then all you need to do is subtract your exponents in order to get your simplified expression in exponential form. Now we could expand that out and figure out one single answer for it, but many times you'll be asked to write your answer using exponents. So our rule says any expression raised to a power in a division problem. To simplify this, all we need to do is subtract our exponents. Let's try some examples. First example, we have 6 to the 11th divided by 6 to the 4th. So we have the same base. Both of them have a base of 6. So all we need to do is subtract our exponents. And this is your think step. I don't expect you to write that out, but I do think that that's what's got to go through your mind in order for you to get your final answer in exponential form. The next one. We're going to take our base, negative 4. It's the same in both the numerator and the denominator. All we need to do is subtract our exponents to get our answer in exponential form. Hold on to those parentheses. I recommend that you keep them in there. We'll talk about the meaning of them at a, in a future lesson. In this next example, we have two rules that we have to apply. First of all is our product property. And we know that when we have two expressions with the same base and they're multiplied together then our product property tells us we can add our exponents. So you have to keep the two straight. 9 to the 4th times 9 to the 3rd is 9 to the 7th. If you ever forget your rules just put everything in expanded form. Do your one-to-one -one cancellation and you'll be able to get the right answer. So we simplified our numerator and now we have to simplify the whole expression. And 7 minus 2 is 5. Now in the next example, a 2 is a multiplication problem. Okay, if you feel um, like you need to make this a fraction, go ahead and do that. Alrighty, and then you multiply numerator times numerator. 1 times y to the 8th is y to the 8th. y to the 5th times 1 is y to the 5th. And we have the same base. We can subtract our exponents. 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay, let's look at another <coughs> rule. This is the power of a quotient property. So basically what this says is that when you have an expression inside parentheses and an exponent outside of parentheses, you need to apply the exponent to every part of the term inside those parentheses. So 3 over 5 raised to the second power is the same as 3 to the second divided by 5 to the second. Let's try some examples. 
some of these are pretty simple. Okay, again, we're going to rewrite it without parentheses. Okay, um, the next one. Again, I do suggest that you keep your expression in parentheses. And a couple different ways you can write this, but let's go ahead and write it like this. People always ask, where do I put that negative, and do I put the negative in the numerator and the denominator, the numerator or the denominator? Well, it's written in front of the fraction, so you can keep it in front of the fraction. <coughs> okay, here's where we really have to apply the, the rule. In the numerator, we have x to the second raised to the second. And previously, we learned that when we have a power raised to a power, what do we do with those exponents? We multiply them. Now in the denominator, for y, neither of those are exponents. Okay, so we have to take our base, 4, and raise it to the second power. So 4 to the second is 16, and then y to the second. In this last example, we have a couple of things happening. We're first going to simplify this expression by raising everything inside of that of those parentheses to the third power. So 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then we have s to the third. 3 to the third, 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And then we have t to the third. Now we're going to multiply that. We really don't need these parentheses. Okay, so let's simplify. Remember, number in the numerator, number in the denominator, we're dividing. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Now here we have t to the fifth in the numerator, t to the third in the denominator. So we can cancel out all the t's down here and three of them up here. So that makes t to the second, because t to the fifth, if you remember, t to the fifth over t to the third equals t to the second. So our final answer in the numerator, we have 1s to the third times t to the second, s cubed, t to the second. In the denominator, we have 27 times 2, which is 54. And that's our final answer.